Okay. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, Holy Communion service on the second Sunday of Easter, uh, often referred to as Low Sunday, uh, although um, I, I don't suppose congregation size matters so much in the, these days. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we hear our Lord's summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thy, thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. And we hear the collect for this day. Almighty Father, you've given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And our epistle reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of the wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices, my body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life, you will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers and sisters, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, the disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side, stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. And we say the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of Jesus Christ. I doubt any of us, certainly not I, have um, ever spent an Easter quite like this last one this week. Um, uh, uh, however, uh, I feel that um, having looked at today's gospel, um, it's good to have a reminder that uh, actually um, we're not the only ones who are in lockdown. Um, the disciples were locked down, if you like, in the upper room after Jesus' resurrection, or certainly after the, the crucifixion. And uh, they, like us, um, had their doubts and their fears, uh, their worries, their concerns, for they were living in times that were not safe. Uh, okay, not from a uh, virus, but from the, uh, the threat of those who were trying to wipe out all memory of Jesus at the time. And so as they were locked behind those closed doors in the upper room, so we are locked behind the closed doors of our homes and even of our churches, sadly. We've had to cancel many plans, many projects, or at least put them on hold. Eagerly awaited Easter holidays have not happened and many summer holidays have been cancelled already. And this gives us cause to be disappointed or, or depressed. Uh, in some cases, even devastated if we really were looking forward to major family celebrations or things of that ilk. And I got to wondering that maybe that's perhaps what those disciples were feeling on that very first Easter as they gathered behind locked doors in that upper room. But one thing that happened in all of this is that Easter still comes. The one thing we can't postpone is Easter. The one thing we can't cancel 
or, or put off to another date is Jesus rising gloriously from the dead on that first Easter morning. Easter has happened. We may be had spent it locked up in our own homes um, or, or watching some idiot on a church lawn performing with uh, l- little toy animals. However, we did it. Um, Easter happened. Jesus rose from the dead. It was there, the 12th of April 2020. It was still Easter, however different it may have been. And at Easter, or after Easter, in this first appearance to his disciples, Jesus comes into that locked room with not words of great triumph, but with a simple message of peace be with you. And that's a good message in this time of uh, COVID-19 crisis, to actually wish those words of Jesus. We do it quite often in worship. Uh, as we share the peace in our church services. Peace be with you is a good thought for these times. However anxious you're getting uh, about what may happen through this virus, and actually if you're still watching news bulletins, you can't help but get anxious as they seem to want to ramp up the terror day by day. Listen to those words of Jesus. Peace be with you and take on board the comfort and the love that they express. For we will not gain salvation from politicians, nor even from great scientists. We gain salvation from this love of God for each and every one of us. So if you get troubled or distressed, by all means pick up the phone to someone, call the rector, do whatever you you help, but never forget those first words of Jesus, peace be with you. And let that instill in your hearts then that more wonderful and praiseworthy thought that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we come to a time of intercessory prayer and we do hold before God at this time all those who are struggling or suffering in uh, this time of crisis. We pray for all those who are anxious because they either have symptoms or are suffering or know someone who's suffering from coronavirus. We continue to pray for wisdom and guidance for our politicians and uh, leaders and for all those who are working to combat the virus, both in the fields of health care and social care and in the scientific areas of trying to find a vaccine. And we pray also for those families who have been bereaved, for their loved ones departed, and we pray that the peace of Christ may come into all these situations, bringing wholeness and healing and hope. So we pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto our whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word 
and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And ye that did truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And before we receive our Holy Communion, we have a hymn at this table we remember. At this table we remember how and where our faith began in the pain of crucifixion suffered by the Son of Man. Looking up in adoration, faith is conscious, he is here. Christ is present with his people, is the call that draws us near. Heart and mind we each examine, if with honesty we face all our doubt, our fear and failure, then we can receive his grace. Peace we share with one another, as from face to face we turn in our brothers and our sisters, Jesus' body we discern. Bread and wine are set before us, as we eat we look ahead. We shall dine with Christ in heaven, where the kingdom feast is spread. Nourished by the bread of heaven, faith and strength and courage grow, so to witness, serve and suffer, 
out into the world we go. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. And chiefly do we give thanks at this time for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, who overcame the power of sin and death and rose triumphant from the tomb. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night as he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Take and eat this, in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed them in thy heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for thee, 
preserve thy body and soul to everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. So as our Saviour commanded and taught us, we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. And we give glory to God. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this Easter tide and always. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! <laughs>